Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. You ever get the feeling that things are getting a little hectic for the bootlicks? Well, I know one person in particular who's feeling the heat. We are not even at year one in the administration of Biden and Harris, and already uh, there have been stories in the Los Angeles Times, in Politico, uh, numerous stories in Politico, now this CNN story over the weekend, how there's this massive dysfunction and how uh, the White House uh, is tired of Vice President Harris and her staff, and her staff is not trusting of the White House. I'm telling y'all right now, and this is for all the folks in the White House and the folks who used to work for Vice President Harris who keep running their miles. The last thing that needs to be happening right now are all of these stories that are circulating that are attacking the vice president. You see the poll numbers, uh, 28 percent that people are saying, oh, my God, lowest ever. And now you see the Washington Post. They're touting Pete Buttigieg, a cabinet member who is far down the totem pole. And folks are saying, oh, maybe they should replace Harris with him. Uh, Michael Harrod had tweeted, they finna leapfrog Pete Buttigieg over Kamala Harris. Watch. I responded. If the Democrats want to see a black female revolt, go ahead and try this. You're guaranteed to lose. The last group y'all want to piss off of black women. There is no group that is more aligned with the Democratic Party than black women. Nobody. First of all, Roly Poly is basically right. Black women are the most aligned with the Democratic Party. But what the heck do they have to show? For all that loyalty, all these decades of sticking up for a party like this. Well, what they have to show for it is a couple of token White House jobs for Simone Mamie Sanders and Kareen Stud Pierre, and not to mention a giveaway job for Kamala Harris. She got herself an upgrade. But that's pretty much it. So black women don't have anything to show for it, just three black females in particular. Well, two and a half if you want to be technical about it. By the way, it's nice to see Rowley's coming to Kamala's defense about her cratering approval numbers, but I told you about this over a month ago. The lesson there is, if you're not following the new black media, then you'll always be the last to know. This is an admission that the ski-wee contingent of black bootlicks have failed. White media told us that Kamala's secret weapon was supposed to be her sorority ties. Well, where the hell are they at now? We've been trying to flush them out ever since November, but they've gone into hiding, and they're still laying low because they know we're waiting for them. We haven't let anyone forget all of the lies that Kamala Harris told, lies by omission, lies about her record, and of course, my personal favorite, you think I'm going to do something that only benefits black people? No! Oh yeah, we made sure that Kamala Harris's record of disrespect and disdain and dismissing black people's concerns did not go away with the campaign. Just because the white media stopped talking about it, or rather stopped trying to deflect from it, we weren't going to stop talking about it. And we haven't let anyone forget all the lies that Biden told, which Harris has eagerly mimicked and echoed for him. But as you can clearly see, roly-poly was exercised about all this. That's probably the only time that the words roly-poly and exercise will be used in the same sentence. People in Kamala Harris's staff have been making noises and rumors and you better not do anything against her because black women don't like it. And y'all better watch out. You better stop that disrespect to Kamala Harris. She's just fine. Y'all gonna leave Kamala alone. You know, he, he's doing the most, as usual. But this wasn't just a one and done, this phony concern for Kamala Harris all of a sudden, oh, we need to stick up for Kamala. This wasn't just a one-time thing by him, because the very next day, Roly-Poly was at it again, doing another audition piece, uh, I mean, uh, video, and he was saying that Kamala should go on the offensive. Insiders uh, report that uh, Harris has a poor relationship with President Joe Biden, is left out of crucial meetings, and is ignored by staffers. Well, that's what folks have been uh, putting out there. Come on, Roly, can't you put a name to it? I mean, you're supposed to have yourself insiders, man. You're supposed to be plugged in, ain't you? As part of the so-called black media, shouldn't you be knowing exactly what's going on there? I mean, come on, ain't your fellow bootlick Simone and Kareen Stud Pierre talking to you? Probably not. Though in all honesty and fairness, I think I do have to give Roly credit for one thing. At least he hasn't been stuttering and stammering over his words like a freaking schizophrenic broken record. 
Um, I, I, absolutely, it is. That, and, but and again, I, it was there also interesting because I still have. Uh, looks like I spoke too soon. I, it was there also interesting because I still have. Uh, we talk about the misinformation campaign. I still got black folks uh, who hit me on social media. Ooh, Kamala Harris threw all these black folks in jail. Okay, well that those that's been factually knocked down. Uh, they continue to repeat this sort of stuff, and so all of those attacks on her, uh, they certainly made a mark. And I'm telling you right now, I keep telling people, uh, if, if, if the White House lets this go on another six months, she cannot recover from this. Oh my. So you happen to have the roly poly prince of the bootlicks and he's saying six more months of this and Kamala Harris is done for. Gee, it hasn't even been one complete year that she's been vice president, and already you got at least one of the bootlicks sitting here ready to throw in the towel. He's gone from cussing and carrying on in her defense to 24 hours later saying, It might be time to, to, time to, 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 to look for the life, 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 abandoned ship. So as you can see, all of those black boule bootlicks, this is their level of loyalty, because they're not loyal to each other. All they care about is whether or not this or that fellow bootlick can help you get yourself a job on MSNBC or CNN, or maybe you can get yourself a consulting gig somewhere, or heavens to Betsy, maybe even a job in the White House basement. Rarely, if ever works, but for the bootlick, hope springs eternal because kissing white supremacist behinds and licking their boots is the only skill that the bootlick actually has. So even the most diehard of bootlicks are already saying her goose is cooked. She can't take much more of this. Well, Kamala is supposed to be a grown woman, though you sure can't tell by listening. That being the case, shouldn't she be taking responsibility for her words and her constant foot and mouth disease that she's got? But at least Roly Poly isn't taking aim at, say, Kamala Harris's communication staff, because if he was, well, that would be the clearest evidence that he's auditioning for a job in her administration. When these things happen, um, you kind of got to respond. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, the vice president's team is not doing a good enough job. Now, I've been saying for a while now, making the occasional joke that if Simone Sanders finds herself in hot water or what have you, oh, you know that Roly Poly's going to be rubbing his chubby little hands and going, I'm going right, I'm right, to slide right in there. It's my time now. But it really wasn't much of a joke. It's the reality. This is how these bootlicks are. In fact, if you go back to October 11th to the video that I made about the media reports about infighting and dysfunction in Kamala's office, you know, the one over a month before Roley finally tore himself away from the buffet line and decided to talk about it. I had an observation to make about that issue and the fact that Roly Poly had nothing to say about the Israeli lobby leading the charge to trash Kamala Harris and the prospects that there might be for a job in the event that Simone Sanders or Corrine Jean-Pierre got sent packing. Now here's a clip from that video. So it shouldn't surprise anyone at all that the Roly Polies and the Corrine Stud Pierres and the Ashley Etiennes aren't saying anything about this. No, of course not. They understand who it is that they can criticize black folks and who they can't, anyone but black folks. They wouldn't stand up for their fellow Haitians. They don't even stand up for one another. This is how the bootlicks make their bones for white supremacy. You have to sacrifice some of your own to prove that you want to curry favor from the dominant society and that's the most important thing to you. It's more important to you than anything else. So at long last, Roly Poly gets to it. He goes ahead and says what he's been warming up to for a very long while, and please don't think this was spur of the moment. He's just been waiting for an opening. All of a sudden, the big bad white media is beating up on Kamala Harris, and Roly Poly, he just, he just couldn't hold his peace any longer. He had to say something, and what he had to say is... You need to make some. You need to. You need to make it go ahead. A couple. Make make a couple. Some, some staff changes over there. You, 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 you need. Some, you need some new folk over there. Yeah, and I'm sure that a certain unemployed former bloviator for CNN who got himself kicked out the door in disgrace and is now doing some vanity project podcast from his broom closet. I'm sure that he has a perfect suggestion for who Kamala Harris should put on the payroll. Right, Roly. Normally, you would call this a bootlick finesse, but finesse implies that you were smooth or subtle or tactful about something. You see anything smooth about this? 
what I'm trying to understand is how are you not doing a, a much better media offensive? Well, Roly, you want to know why it is that your girl Kamala isn't doing a better media offensive? It's because she's never had to. Kamala Harris has never had to deal with any tough political problems before or any sort of questions or have to answer anything. She's an invention of the California political machine. Her sugar daddy, er, I mean political patron, er, I mean mentor, was low-down Willie Brown. He handed her every political job she's ever had, including her Senate seat. She doesn't know how to go on the offensive because she never had to. All she had to do was wink and smile, and as you see, that's what she's doing today. That's why she's always laughing and giggling and cackling, because after decades of practicing how to make nice for sweaty, dirty old men like Willie Brown, that's the only thing she knows how to do. She does it as an instinct. She just giggles and laughs because when you're a plaything for a bunch of dirty old men, that pretty much becomes your skill set. I mean, for God's sake, when you have the woman who claims to be half black at least, and she goes to Detroit, the blackest major city in the country, and she gets washed by a half wit like Tulsi Gabbard, that's how you know you ain't got the sense that God gave a cantaloupe. She couldn't even do offense on her own against one person against accusations that she knew were going to be thrown at her on that night. Kamala's always had the California political machine that's been able to do things for her. They would handle the dirty tricks for her. They make sure that the white media out there in California had her in a hermetically sealed bubble and never ask her questions that are too tough or give her too hard a time. And that's what she's used to. She sits back while her patrons and sugar daddies and her political handlers take care of all that. But now she's out here in the big bad world where Willie Brown and the California political machine can't seal her away and insulate her. And she's getting her butt kicked. So while it is true that the mental midgets that Kamala has as her miscommunication staff have been completely and thoroughly useless on this front, the truth of the matter is this woman's been making a fool of herself in the media unintentionally for years now, long before 2021. When Tulsi Gabbard debated Kamala Harris, she wasn't even throwing hand grenades. It was just weak shots, basic stuff, the most basic thing that any prosecutor running for a non-prosecutorial office would expect, that people would say, you clearly were locking up people who were innocent and you were blocking the release of people who were innocent. It's what every prosecutor faces because it's what every prosecutor does. Kamala Harris knew it was coming and she didn't have any response for it. The months and years that she knew that were going to culminate to her presidential run, and it never occurred to her that she might want to have something to say when people confront her about all the dirt that she was doing as a prosecutor for all of those 20 years. I, I, I'm proud of, I'm proud of my record, and, and I did the work. Yeah, dirty work. That's the kind of thing that she would come back with. She would give these weak little deflections talking about the public trusted her. Yeah, the same public that was condemning her like the family of Matrice Richardson. She would make these tall tales about how the community came to her whenever they needed help. Yeah, the people came to her saying, when are you going to get these cops that are killing black folks, including black women like Matrice Richardson off the streets? And she told them, uh, I can't do nothing for you. She was dodging and deflecting, and it was obvious to people that she was dodging, deflecting, bobbing, and weaving, and nobody was fooled. And this is what happens when Kamala Harris tries to handle offense herself. But uh, don't tell Roly-Poly that. Apparently, it's all her staff's fault, right? Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. When they, when they had the meetings and heard the Divine Nine, okay, that was weak coverage there. I don't understand how you didn't blanket black media uh, when that actually took place. Sure, I'll sit here and I'll look at certain things that might be uh, on her Twitter feed, you know, and, and, and I sort of get this email, which is like this, you know, you know, weekly roundup uh, of things that she 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 does. But, you know, frankly, their outreach on that is weak as hell. She was I mean, let me be clear, but Senator Kamala Harris was far more aggressive in coming on this show and other outlets when she was, frankly, trying to get the nomination, then she has been since getting the nomination and since winning. And so my deal to her team is, what the hell are y'all doing? Two things to note. First of all, Kamala Harris doesn't deal with the black media. We are the black media and we're the ones who exposed her and put her on blast. So of course she ain't going to deal with us. 
because she's an invention of white power and the black media don't suck up to white power. Now, the little bootlick media of which Roly is the clown prince, those guys, she can deal with them, except as Roly just got through admitting and confessing, well, she's keeping him at arm's length too. I get this general email that gets sent out and this basic roundup of what she did for the week. Y'all, y'all, out we reach weak at hell. He's begging for an interview. That's what this is. Roly Poly's out here clout chasing, as usual. Translation Kamala, can you please give me an talk to you, please? That's what he's doing. That's what this is, folks. This is Roly Poly campaigning for an interview. Please, 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 Kamala, I ain't been relevant since I did the two-step with Hillary Clinton. That's where Roly Poly's coming from now. To him, he thinks this is a brilliant segue from saying, oh, there are problems to, and this is why you need to talk with me. Oh, if, if she would only talk with me, everything would be so much better. Got news for you, Roly. You're part of the reason why she's in the fix that she's in. Sticking to a bunch of bootlicks and yes-men who are simply going to nod their empty heads to her every vapid word. She was listening to fools like you, and all that happened was she thought that she had popularity that she didn't have. But she's not alone on that front, is she, Roly? I mean, after all, apparently you seem to think that kissing all of them DNC Democratic behinds was going to make you the bill of the ball, but it didn't work out that way, did it? Well, hopefully folks have heard you. Um, and oh, they're gonna no, no, do no, 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 no. I text them directly. Still waiting. Did you uh, get that? I, 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 I texted them directly. Still waiting. I can easily see Roly sitting there like a high school girl hoping that the boyfriend's going to call back. He's got a bucket of haagen in one hand and a box of chicken wings and a bag of Funyuns in the other, looking anxiously at the phone, waiting, hoping, praying that a text message pops up from Kamala. But it ain't happened, and it's not going to. But this is what happens when the bootlicks are under pressure. He just got through telling you, yep, Roly Poly sitting here, I've sent the messages directly. Yeah, he's been campaigning heavy for them butter biscuits. I mean, you guys thought that we were joking all these years when we were talking about Roly like this. You guys thought that we were making this up or that we were just exaggerating. No, he just got through admitting it to you. Oh yeah, he's on these email lists that the general public's not on, and he texts them directly, so apparently he's got direct numbers for them to text them at. I don't understand. Y'all y'all done ghosted me. I don't get it. Why? Why? This is what Roly Poly's been doing all these years, sucking up to these people, thinking he was doing some networking, and they just paying him no never mind. And now he's lashing out. Because Kamala Harris has got the same problem that Roly's got, the same problem all these bootlicks have got. Roly Poly doesn't fool anyone. Nobody listens to him. He's not relevant. He's not black media. He's a bootlick, a worn out shill desperately trying to get a job from CNN or MSNBC. Or these days, as you can see, he's campaigning for some low level press secretary gig in the basement of the White House. People know who the black media actually is, and they know that he's not it. They listen to us. But you see, Roly, he's the incompetent operative class, and he can't turn her numbers around. Kamala's hemorrhaging support precisely because we won't let anyone forget what she's done and the lies that she's told. The black media is why Kamala Harris is floundering, and phony bootlicks calling themselves black media are being ignored. And what's Roly's strategy? We gotta get we gotta get her some positive press, you know. We, we gotta go out, gotta go on offense and tell people about all the good stuff that she's doing. Bootlicks are so used to having white daddy give them things. White media gives them a platform, usually a minor seat on some white media roundtable show. So when they're on these white media outlets, these bootlicks think that they're controlling what people think. They think that they're masters of the universe because of the white media megaphone. Then they come out here to the people and they see that no one trusts them and no one likes them either. And Roly Poly, he just doesn't get it. I mean, when you praise somebody on MSNBC or CNN, doesn't that mean that people are going to automatically like them? Because millions of people, well, they're all a bunch of empty headed sheep anyway. And they saw you bigging Kamala Harris up. And isn't that how it works? They're just going to go along with it because they just follow whatever the white media says, right? This is what happens when you've been a bootlick, especially when you've been a bootlick all your adult life. You forget how reality works because you spent so much time in a white media bubble. 
Well, CNN isn't the real world, Roly. You think Kamala's problem is a PR problem. That if she can just get some charitable write-ups in the New York Slimes or the Washington Compost or CNN, then her numbers will suddenly turn around. People, particularly black people, don't like Kamala Harris precisely because she's been attacking us since she was a prosecutor in Alameda County back in the early 90s. And no amount of phony praise from you or flattery by the rest of the white media is going to change that. We've had almost 30 years of Kamala Harris acting as an attack dog of the state against black people. And when we told her go after the thugs in blue for killing us, she ignored us. We haven't forgotten that. So if you think if you can just get the white media to carpet bomb us with puff pieces and insincere stories flattering her, telling us what a great job she's doing, that we'll suddenly do a 180 and forget her 30 years of attacks on us, then you're an even bigger fool than I thought you were. And I already thought you were the epitome of stupid. But this is what's happening in the bootlick circles. Pure panic has broken out. Roly thinks he sees an opportunity. There's not one there, but he's desperately hoping. While he sends them daily texts. <laughs> Y'all gonna talk to me? <laughs> Please talk to me. Talk to me. Meanwhile, he's telling black folks who, who bring up Kamala Harris's heinous record against us. He's, uh, uh, them stuff's been knocked down, been knocked, knocked down. Really, the only thing I see knocked down is Kamala Harris. The accusations against her are still standing. Yeah, this is, this is Roly Poly showing that he will go ahead and carry water better than Simone Sanders. He's trying to prove that he can one-up her. If Simone Sanders lies through her teeth and tries to claim that the mass incarceration of black folks that took place after the passage of Biden's 94 crime bill wasn't Biden's fault, well, here Roly is saying, I can be even more dismissive and even more condescending towards black people than that. We've got documentation of Kamala's record, particularly against black women. So for him to casually dismiss that and then claim black women would be offended if you remove Kamala Harris, black women don't give a damn about Kamala Harris. That whole black feminist spiel ran its course and died a long time ago. You're not going to have any Jamila LaPukes or Tarana Burks or anybody else who are trying to dig up that corpse and try to see if they can make it walk around like Weekend at Bernie's. That ain't going to work. What you got going on here is Roly Poly's bootlicking mixtape. Yeah, this is his little demo reel of what a good little shill he can be. He's demonstrating that he will dismiss black people's valid criticisms and do it with contempt. If y'all just go ahead and, uh, and give me a paper, put me on the payroll, uh, but, well, I'll show y'all. Anybody calling themselves criticizing Kamala, I, I put them in the in the, in the play. I, I get them told. Kamala Harris never had all this public support, certainly not from the black community. So for Roly to pretend as if she was on cloud nine and doing just fine, the hell she was, her presidential campaign crashed and burned as soon as she announced her candidacy. So, uh, Roly, if you're hoping to save Kamala's political future, you're only about two years too late. Though for him, that's a personal best response time. But Roly's putting his bid in. If he can't get a White House job, at least give him an interview. He smells blood in the water as he sees it. Simone Sanders or Kareem Stud Pierre, they're about to get their walking papers, and he's thinking to himself, now's the time for him to make it clear. My, 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 uh, my evenings are, 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 I got some free time on my hands. He's offering his advisory services to Kamala Harris. Talk about the blind leading the stupid. Now, keep in mind, Kamala's getting shellacked for all of her media gaffes and putting her foot in the mouth in her own mouth. Every time she talks to the white media, she shoots herself in the foot. And who comes along calling himself offering to help her out? A man who got himself fired from CNN for alleged homophobic comments. The only person who would get more heat and criticism than Kamala would be Roly Poly. Perhaps that's his plan. But the condescension and disrespect is absolutely intolerable. Here we see that the bootlicks, they don't tell us what Kamala's going to be doing for black women. If, as, since um, Roly Poly wants to make it all about black women, maybe, 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 y'all better be, be concerned about black women. Y'all want to lose an election? Go ahead and lose that black female, black, 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 black female voters. Okay, in that case, then what the hell is Kamala Harris going to do for black women? What the hell has she done for black women? Oh no, for Roly and the rest of the bootlicks, no, no. All Kamala Harris has to do is just claim to be a black woman. As long as she says, hey, my father was Jamaican... 
That's all she's got to do for black women. Just say, well, my father is from Jamaica, and that, that's pretty much it. That's all you need from me. You don't need anything else from me. Meanwhile, she goes to these other groups, and she tells them what she's going to do for them. Playing black voters, or in this case, black women in particular, playing them for fools. We'll go ahead and tell black women how great they are while we get them to vote for a woman who spent much of her career locking black women up, targeting black mothers under the guise of truancy. It's not that surprising, though, of course, that Roly-Poly has no clue what the word offensive means in this context. Roly-Poly seems to have confused going on the offensive with merely being offensive. Good day, and be one.